the timber sled riot in Sierra concrete conditions. It works. Inside the Blanco Lirio Global World Headquarters top secret skunk works hangar underneath the left wing of the mighty Luscom is the latest top secret project, a 2020 timber sled riot kit attached to the 2019 KDM 300 XC TPI bike. There's a great video. This is a technical video for those of you that are interested in making this conversion. I'll give you a couple of hints and tips that I've learned putting this conversion together. There's a great video already out there by Timber Sled that shows the basics of how this is done. If you can change a wheel on your motorcycle, you can install this Timber Sled, sled kit and do this entire conversion on your own in about three hours follow the easy step-by-step -step instructions. However, I'll tell you, the written instructions are for uh, an aero model, a slightly different model, so they've made some improvements onto the design that makes the installation even easier than the written instructions that come with the kit. When you first decide to get one of these things, first of all, this is the Timber Sled Riot. This is the latest, newest, lightest weight and smallest track model that Timber Sled has come out with. Timber Sled, of course, is now owned by Polaris and gives your um, snow bike the most dirt bike-like riding qualities of any of the kits. So when you go to order one of these things, first off, you can't just get one of these things. <laughs> if you go online today and try to get one, you can't. Polaris is squelching the de squelching the inventory by going through a program called snow check where you got to go at the beginning of the season i guess around april or so and get your name in the hat to get one of these kits in the springtime i was only able to get this because there was one extra one left available up at the polaris dealer in reno nevada a guy bought three of these and only picked up one and i was able to pick up this this extra one the basic kit this is the basic kit four thousand five hundred dollars so when you get the kit, you got to make a couple decisions. Do you want the basic kit like this, or you don't want the LE, the limited edition, with the trick adjustable shocks down here on the back? And then once you make that decision, you got to decide, do you want to go with the fixed strut attachment or the shock strut attachment? And I'll show you that in a minute. And then you got to tell the dealer exactly which motorcycle you're going to adapt the kit to, and then you purchase the mounting kit, about 160 bucks for the fixed strut mounting kit gets your $4,500 sled mounted to your dirt bike. A couple of things about that. On the mounting kit, the mounting kit comes with a whole mess of bushings and the mounting kit um, fitment instructions are found online. And the as, <laughs> as is usually the case, some of these bushing numbers have been superseded compared to the fitment instructions that you find online. But if you've got the right kit number for your right, for the correct model of bike and snow sled, the bushings that you need, you will find in this kit. The numbers may not match up, but you may have to fiddle around a little bit and you can figure out real easily and quickly what are the correct bushings out of this kit for your installation. Here's the fitment chart. You get the correct make and model of bike and kit installation type and figure out what your spacers requirements are. What I really enjoy about putting this kit together is it's a simple bolt-on installation. You remove your rear chain and your entire rear wheel, swing arm and shock and rear brake assembly as one assembly you remove your front wheel and front brake assembly. And on, in the case of the KDM, you'll want to take your odometer cable with you off of the bike. Then you can bolt on the rest of the kit. Now what makes this new version of the kit or these later versions of the kit so appealing, besides the lower price point, is the no fuss, no muss brake attachment here. The kit now comes with a fully self-contained braking system so you don't have to break open your brake lines and bleed your brakes and mess around with brake fluid when installing this kit. You simply remove the brakes off of your bike and install the brake that comes already hooked up with the kit. And of course you're only going to get a rear brake because you only got a ski in the front and so you're going to put that brake in the same location as where the front brake was. 
there's been a vast improvement on brakes on these kits as these kits now have the brakes fully contained, fully sealed, keeping the snow out of these brakes. Whereas in years past, these brakes tended not to be as effective or you had to pump them up in order to get them to work. But now they got them dialed in. This is a pretty new sport and it's just now becoming rather wildly popular. The recommended front sprocket is the same one I'm running, a 13 tooth front sprocket. You're going to adjust the chain tension to about a half an inch to an inch of play right there. The chain is adjusted right here with this jam nut, moves the frame back. Of course, you got to loosen these two bolts here and that allows you to move this frame back by adjusting the chain with this jam nut screw assembly right here. This is the fixed shock strut attachment that comes with this kit. This is about four or five hundred bucks less than having a full shock in this location, but I'm not planning on flying off of any mountaintops and catching huge air. This is just a beginner's rig for me. So I'm going to start with the uh, fixed shock strut here, mounts in the place of the original shock of the motorcycle. Bolts on down here with two bolts coming up from underneath here. The swing arm pivot bolt is your stock swim, swing arm pivot bolt torqued down to the stock specifications. And the bushings fit here and here and here and here and adapt this kit to your motorcycle. Besides the two wheels, here's the only other parts I'm going to save for next uh, spring. The uh, fork gaiters, the rear mud flap. I got to put these back on, the frame protectors, take your kickstand off, and your stock chain. So one of the last jobs I need to do is route this brake line and hook it on up. Get it out of the way of any hot exhaust. The front ski has a rubber bumper located down in here, get, allowing the ski a little bit of play. You want to properly torque that down to the required specs. And then get your bushings here and here for your motorcycle and install the ski using these clamps and these bushings and the stock axle from the bike. The only thing that may need some modification or cutting is if you want to use your original um, gaiters or fork guards right here, you might need, you'll need to cut them out to make a notch for this uh, assembly right here if you want to use your stock plastic fork guards. There's a great handle so you can pull the thing around in the snow once you dump it. <laughs> Don't forget to remove your kickstand. <laughs> Don't try to put your foot down like uh, when you're dirt biking in the snow. You're just going to fall right over if it's deep powdery snow. There's an, the track is nearly a foot wide. You got to balance it and keep it level. But once you're rolling, unlike a snow machine, a snowmobile, you're able to side hill like crazy on this machine, whereas a snowmobile with its two ski arrangement, it's going to constantly want to work its way downhill and you have to lean way off to the uphill side to keep your snowmobile from tracking downhill wide while side hilling. That is all different on a snow bike. Stay tuned for future updates. I got to find some warm gear. See you here. Well, it definitely works. The little 300 rips right along. In these Sierra concrete snow conditions, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it, the bike handles like a dirt bike with a 12 inch ski on in the front of it. The Sierra concrete type snow, wet snow, has you working the handlebars quite a bit. And in order to do a turn, you just keep standing on top of the bike like a dirt bike and you push the dirt bike down into the turn underneath you and force it into the turn. If it feels like it's going to tip over slow speeds, just gas a little bit and it'll cut right around the corner. Now these are my tracks through the trees here through the so-called fresh snow. <laughs> um, and you see there's not much compaction. So 
Like I said, if you want to go in a turn, you want to dab in a turn like a dirt bike, forget it. There's nothing to dab. It's just soft snow. So when you come to a stop with a 12-inch ski and a 12-inch track, you just got to balance the bike and stay on top of it. Steep learning curve. The Timber Sled Riot in Sierra concrete conditions. It works.